first thing I get is the heart rate and I get like sore tummy. Um, I don't get sick like other people but I can get like pain and sort of cramping. It's mostly my heart, mostly the heart. I suppose I just get really overwhelmed and then I feel like I can't really do anything. Um, like every task feels like a problem, it feels like too much. I just kind of want to stay in bed. Just to be there but don't be over, over, overwhelming. Don't um, pity me or like be like, oh no, we really do like you because it, it doesn't feel real. It feels like you're just saying it because you don't mean it, but I'm feeling bad. So just to just be yourself and just be there. Uh, yeah, I think when people just opt to have a chat, I think that does a lot. Even if you don't want to have a chat, just talking to someone about anything or going, going out, meeting up with someone. So this past year, the pandemic's been hard, but doing that helps a lot. Trying to bottle it up and trying to ignore it and trying to carry on and carry on as I was doing. It's honestly just better to just, just stop everything for a second and just take a breath and then be like, okay, this is happening, we're good. Ignoring myself, ignoring my symptoms. Often I'll like try and do something to forget what I'm feeling. Like I'll go out and see someone or I'll try and get loads of work done or I'll eat everything in the fridge and that just doesn't help at all. I need to like give myself the time to not do anything rather than try and push through it. I suppose it's uh, you know jumping to conclusions or uh, speaking down to sort of uh, you know issues that I might have that they may not understand or they might not have been through. So perhaps it's quite difficult for them to sort of engage with me. But uh, to speak down or to sort of like diminish what I'm going through, I suppose uh, it makes me feel smaller, which is quite difficult to deal with. Yeah. I find that hard when they're trying to fit their experience into mine. Um, that doesn't help, um, or just kind of like being like, oh, you'll be fine when you have a drink, because that doesn't help me. When you see everyone posting their perfect lives on social media and then you compare it to yourself, it can be quite damaging and unhelpful. The most uh, impactful ones exercise for me and just putting my phone down, because I feel like for me mainly the, the worst thing I do is just go on my phone when I'm feeling bad and then it just goes on for hours and hours. So if I put it down and then do a bit of exercise, which I hate doing at the start, afterwards I feel great. So I'll do a specific visualization where I'm floating along a river and like each thought, um, like a negative thought, anxious thought, whatever, it kind of floats up and I'll hold it. <laughs> and when I'm holding it, you kind of like, you then explore it and you explore the thought and then you either put it down next to you. If it's a really like rational thought, this is fair to be anxious about, then you put it next to you, but it kind of floats alongside. It doesn't consume you anymore or you let it go. You float it up. If it's not necessary and it's just kind of a, either a learnt thought pattern or whatever, it, yeah, it can go and that really, really helps. When I recognise that I'm feeling low and like, I'm like, okay, you know, I feel low, that's okay. You know, I'm going to accept it and I'm going to do what I can with it and I'm not going to push myself. And then like, I'll do something nice like painting or going for a walk or something, just making sure like I'm aware of what I'm feeling and um, yeah, and looking after myself basically. Getting out of the house and going to do some sports, being around other people can really help improve your mood. Um, and just make you, yeah, generally feel a lot better. It doesn't have to come from anywhere or anything and don't feel guilty or bad if it doesn't come from one explicit thing.